It is said that if you want to hire a chef, you should ask them to make you scrambled egg. Now, that's not because somehow scrambled egg is the definitive test of a chef's ability. It's rather that if a chef can't make even a scrambled egg and can't make it taste good, then they're probably not worth bothering with. And Fizzbuzz is the scrambled egg equivalent of the coding interview. Passing the Fizzbuzz test won't get you the job. Not passing it will lose you the job. It's as simple as that. But having said that, you know, Fizzbuzz is quite a useful exercise for a beginner. Um, it tests certain things. It tests whether you know how to use loops. It tests whether you know how to use conditionals. It tests uh, if you know a little bit about logic. And so in today's video, I want to explain to you what the Fizzbuzz problem is, in case you don't know it, and then we'll work through a solution together. And then we'll, you know, we'll look at the sort of pitfalls that you might fall into. And when we've got a solution, we'll see if we can make it better or solve it in a different way. How how about that? Okay, let's start with the explanation. What is Fizzbuzz? Well, Fizzbuzz is a game played usually by children where you have two people and the people count. They count one after the other. So they take it in turns to count. When they get to three, any multiple of three, they have to say fizz and any multiple of five and they say buzz. If the number they're on is a multiple of both three and five, then they have to say fizz buzz. So, Giles, could you just come and give me a hand? Yeah, yeah, no problem, of course. It should go something like this. One. Two. Fizz. Four. Buzz. Fizz. Seven. Incidentally, if you'd like to learn Python, then we have a course. The link is in the description. Go and check it out. Can I go now? Let's try to write a simple solution now in Python. We'll start with a for loop. You could use a while loop, but we're going to start with the for loop. So we have for i in range. This is how you do a for loop in Python. For i in range, 1 to 101. Now the range parameters, uh, the first number is where we want to start the iterator. And then we go up to 1 before the, the, the second parameter. So if we want to go from 1 to 100, we have 1 to 101 in the range function. Then we put the colon, the all-important Python colon, and then we're going to test. We're going to do a conditional. If the number that we're on, i in this case, if i divided by 3, let's start with that. If the remainder of i divided by 3 is 0, so i modulo 3, if that's 0, then the number is a, is a, um, a multiple of 3. So that's fizz. So if that's true, we'll print, we'll print fizz. We'll now do the same thing with 5, if it's a multiple of 5. If i modulo 5 equals 0, then we'll print buzz. And then if the number we're on is a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 5, well, we'll just print fizz buzz. And then if it's none of those things, we'll print the number. So that should work. But when we run it, it doesn't. And that's because when we use if, if we use elif as well, if we're testing more than one condition, if the first condition is met, it doesn't test the rest. So we need to restructure this if an elif uh, statement that we have here to work differently. So the first thing we'll test for is the three and the five. OK, so we'll test for that first. If that condition is met, then we'll print fizzbuzz. If the second condition is met, let's call that at the moment. It doesn't really matter what all of these come in now. So if five is met, then we'll print buzz. And then finally, if three is met, then we'll print fizz. And then if none of those are met, we'll print the number and you've got yourself a solution. So that's one simple solution. You know, that works. That will do the job. Let's look at another way of doing this now. And we can do it in a completely different way. So this time we're going to have the same for loop, but we're going to use a string. Let's call that string output and let's make that equal to an empty string. And then we'll do some similar logic. So if i divided by 3, if the remainder of that is 0, if i modulo 3 is equal to 0, then we will make output, this string output, equal to fizz. And on the second test now, we'll test to see whether it is divisible by 5, whether it's a multiple of 5. And if it is, then we just add bars to the string that we've already got. So we don't have to test for the 3 and the 5 because this if structure here, not using the elif, but using two if statements, will check for both. And if both are true, it'll add buzz to fizz and we'll get fizz buzz. And then we can print out either the output, which has something in it, or just the i that we're on. So if we use print with or, we'll either get whatever's in the string, which is what we'll want. It'll either be fizz buzz or fizz buzz. And if there's nothing in there, if it's an empty string, it'll print the other thing that we've asked it to check for, 
and that's I. So we'll get numbers where there's no fizz or buzz or fizz buzz. That works, that's solution number two. For the third solution, it's very similar to solution number two, but this time we're gonna use ternary operators. If you don't know about ternary operators in Python, do look them up, they're quite useful. And essentially with ternary operators, as you can see on the screen, we can put the if statement and condition and else all in one line. So we've got a very similar solution as solution number two, except we're using these ternary operators and we put the if statements all on one line. Solution number four is a little bit more interesting and it would definitely be worth your while taking a, a good look at it to make sure that you understand it. We still have the for loop, but inside the for loop we have one thing and that is a print function. Inside that print function, we have the word fizz, we have the word buzz and we have i. Now we'll only get one or the other of those. We'll either get fizz, buzz, or fizz, buzz, or the i. We won't get both. That's the way the or operator within the print function works. We get fizz if i modulo 3 less than 1 returns true, because that will return 1, and we'll get fizz times 1, which gives us fizz. If it's not a multiple of 3, that will return 0, and we won't get fizz. The same is true for buzz. If i modulo 5 less than 1 returns true, we get buzz. If it's not true, we don't get buzz. So we'll either get fizz or buzz or fizz buzz in that section. That will print what we want it to print, depending on what number we're on. And if none of that is true, if we don't get any of that, we'll get the number that we wanted. And that is a nice little solution. There are other ways of solving this as well. You can use lists and you might be even uh, able to use some kind of map function. Have a think about that 